joining me today <laughs> on the Unoweb interview show, a friend from the past. I'm back. J.M. Brewster, author of Dark Prison, part of the Gray Tower series. Book one hey, out book now. Here? Beautiful. Look at those chesticles. Book two. <laughs> In the process, it, uh, available for pre-order now. Mm -hmm. JM, you've been you've been very busy since the last time we talked three months ago. Yeah, I've been super busy. Let's see. Um, I finished uh, book two in the Great Tower series. It's called Troubled Paradise, and it is available right now for pre-order. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be available to read on June the third. So June June third. So the pre order you can you can pur purchase it now and you can yep. do a digi digital download June third. Mm -hmm. Yep, as well as paperback copy. So this is going to continue the the story that we've we it, we've it, had in in book one. Yes, it's uh it will continue the Gray Tower um company, and um but it has two it focuses on two different um characters instead of Logan and Kira in the last one. Who are the who are the main focuses in this one? Jack and Cat. I don't so, know if you kind of noticed that in the last book, but they had a little bit of energy going on. Yeah, I, I did. Jack is Jack is um, Logan's friend, mm -hmm. uh, who we get to see a, some snippets of throughout. Um, and Cat is an IT lady who basically figures out who the mole was. I don't want to get. I guess. I can't help but like give something away. But figured out who the mole was in in the end of the story. Um, was that was that your idea all along when you when you got to the end of book one? Were you thinking like, okay, I can continue the series with these two characters? Yep, that's exactly right. Um, I have pretty much the whole series mapped out. I How know, many books in total? Oh goodness, um, they're at least going to be six or seven, maybe more. Wow. Uh, the cool thing about Great Tower is I can keep adding people, <laughs> yeah. and right. um, it just continues. Um, but there is one main story arc that will continue, and that's with the conglomerate. And um, so you'll get to find out a little bit more about that organization in my new book, Troubled Paradise. So you've also been doing, you started your a YouTube channel. Um, yep. Where you're reading dark prison yep yep um it's just to give people a taste of the book because sometimes it's like oh do i really want to get into this or not so i put out a bunch of chapters for free where i just sit and read them um mm -hmm. you know you can just sit and listen to them if you want i have highly you, recommend it <laughs> have you enjoyed doing it so far uh yeah it's a little tedious trying to do that and editing and um getting more books out i already have um, the third book pretty much mostly written wow how long did it take you to write the second one um i started in december right when dark prison came out and i finished uh earlier this month wow i was you, busy you've been hoofing it <laughs> yeah i have and, and it was said... fun it was fun to write so that's why well, the book too is it's not um, it's not your typical erotic romance. It's a lot more action packed, uh, a lot more guns blazing. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, like still? Is that going to be kicked up a notch in book two? Um, it definitely is. Um, there's a little bit for everybody. There's obviously the romance aspect, um, and then about halfway through the book, um, all heck breaks loose. And uh, we get some some crazy stuff going on. So even the guys might like this one. So, well, I like the first one. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely some like run and gun action always in each book. So now you're a video gamer. I am. So are you pulling a lot of inspiration from video games for for the, the stories? Well, it's funny because I knew what the first half of Trouble Paradise was going to be, but then I'm like, okay, what's the trouble actually going to be? And I got inspiration. <laughs> I got inspiration um, from actually uh, Fallout New Vegas. Oh, what was it? <laughs> what oh, was I can't. I can't. I can't keep it hidden. Um, it's Super Soldier Armor. Ooh. I know. That's why I said the guys will like this one. So the mercenaries in Gray Tower. 
find super soldier armor or like they they get it equipped well no they're up against the guys in the super soldier armor so it becomes a lot more difficult oh wow Mm -hmm. that sounds pretty epic it is pretty epic what what's your favorite part of writing these series is it the fight scenes is it the running gun is it the erotic part like what what do you feel most at home doing um, I really like playing off of the like tension between the two romantic characters, mm-hmm. but I also like uh, that's my daughter in the background. She's watching Shira, but <laughs> so I apologize. <laughs> but uh, you know, I like writing a little bit of everything. That that I mean, that's that's why I write romantic suspense. I don't know if I could write like a straight romance novel without there being some sort of suspense going on. You feel like you'd get bored with it? I think I would get bored with it. So you're always going to have... There's always something for everybody in all of my books. Yeah, I feel like we have to we have to really write kind of what we want to read. Otherwise... And that it is 100% my favorite genre. Um, I read everything, but, uh, you know, if I had... You a really book, do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so, uh, and I, I'm wondering, too, like, along with along with the writing you uh you do book reviews you, you've done a yep. ton of book reviews but you also are now taking on editing other people's work yes um so my background i actually have a ba in uh, english language arts education mm-hmm. and uh, i was an english teacher for seven years <laughs> and then on top of that in 2014 i started uh writing and editing for a um, geek and gaming culture website and I'm actually managing editor there. So it just kind of naturally, this is something that I always wanted to do, and it's yeah. coming to fruition. Well, how long, when did you start doing this? Oh, goodness, just uh, like last week. <laughs> has, it been, has it been good so far? Yes, business is good. There, um, my rates are lower than most editors. Um, it's not because my surf, like I'm, you know, my services are cheaper or whatever. But um, I just wanted to fill a niche um, where a lot of indie authors might not be able to afford an editor. And yeah. I just kind of wanted to help people out, basically. Yeah, that's a that's a big thing in the indie market, because whereas opposed to somebody who's got a publishing house behind them, we're literally one a person trying to build like a business unto themselves yes. and trying to afford a traditional editor is or anything really. In terms of marketing, editing, cover design, all this stuff is overwhelming for the for the indie author. Yep. What have you found uh, since the last time we talked? Have your marketing practices changed at all? What have you been doing in terms of social media and all that kind of stuff that's have you found for you? Yeah. Um, so one thing I started using Amazon advertising, and mm-hmm. um, it, there it's actually not bad. Um, I've had a. Um, a few sales from it. Um, but the cool thing about it is you don't pay unless you get people clicking on, on your ad, which is good right. because if no one's interesting, you don't have to, you know, interested, no one, you're not paying up the wazoo and it's not that expensive, um, right. to do that. So that's one of the things I was doing. Um, another thing is I've been building up my social media and just, advertising so much <laughs> you yeah. are right now yeah. um, I'm, I'm persistent in my advertising and I get a lot of sales from that um, and I guess the last thing and probably the most important thing for indie authors is building building relationships not just trying to get a fan base but actual legit relationships with other writers and fans and and all of that because you're not really going to get anywhere unless you have support and right. that that would be the biggest thing, you know. If if you're first starting out, get connected with the writing community on Twitter because they will help you out so much. If you have questions, you know, if you need followers, they they'll they'll hook you up. They really will. It is a really inclusive uh, inclusive group um, where everyone seems to want to help one another out, which is which is rare in this world. Yeah, I've never. Yeah. I mean, I've been in different communities on Twitter and this has been just it's been a rewarding experience so shout out to all the people in the writing community they're awesome it's it's even different like on facebook i'm in a couple of writing groups on facebook too and the hostility involved it's like just super volatile which blows my mind um i wrote an article about an argument i got in with a lady on on facebook for uh some of some of the things she wrote about 
people who who should be able to write and who shouldn't be able to write, which huh. is just, is which is ridiculous. But I mean, just the I guess the ideas that are um, the culture that's presented on on Twitter is really uh, something refreshing. Yeah, it sure. is. Um, <laughs> when it comes to what you're writing, and and what you're what you're trying to build, JM. What kind are you are you looking to build an empire of books? Well, you, um, I mean, you're very you're very meticulous about what you do um, in terms of like having contracts, like actually running. I know, a, I know. Actually, I, running a serious business. Yeah, I, I I'm kind of like type A when it comes to that. I just I, I don't know. I just feel like I need to cover my bases, and also like anyone who writes a book and publishes it, you've automatically become a small business. And so receipts and invoices and things like that, you just have to have it because at the end of the year, you're going to have to do your taxes, (laughs) you know? Right. Yeah. Hold on. Make sure you have the, the analytics and the, the, the numbers you get from Amazon for sure. From everything. And I think we, a lot of us don't even realize that going into it. Nope. Nope. I didn't. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, December was when you published your very first book. It's now... April, the end of April. I mean, can you summarize what that what the the journey's been like for you from oh, December goodness. to April? Um, Does it feel it, like only five months? Um, <laughs> no. Um, in a way, it's felt longer than that, and in another way, it's felt like it just went by like so quick. Um, you know, it's been a roller coaster. Um, one thing, one experience that I have learned from is that um, I had my first Amazon review. Somebody Mm -hmm. read about maybe a a chapter and a half and decided that they were going to write a two-star review because they didn't like the beginning of it. I don't know. Yeah. And I had to recover from that. And it was really a blow to my ego because I knew the book was good. I knew it was good. And since then, you know, my feelings about it have been validated with many more reviews. Right. But um, I kind of had to overcome that and grow some thick skin. And, you know, in a way, that was probably the, the best experience that I could have had. Because all of a sudden, you know, the disappointment of a bad review, all of a sudden, I can just shake that off now. Because it is what it is. This is my book, my writing. And at the, the end of the day, I write for myself. And if other people like it, good. And I think most people will like it. Yeah. It is, uh, and I'm right there with you. I mean, I got a two star review right out the gate, but I paid for it on um, onlinebookclub.org, <laughs> <laughs> which pissed me off. Um, but it was like it, it was like you said, exactly what I needed at the time, and I realize now that it's it's more of it's such a long game that we're playing. Anytime yeah. anytime a person writes a book or decides they want to become a published author. It's like you have these you have these movie stars now that are out there getting getting book deals mm-hmm. uh, because they have a great name and publishing houses yep. are falling down. So they're like, we need to invest in somebody who's definitely going to sell books. So they give big, big contracts to big names for that yep. reason, which is totally understandable. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But for people who are writers who want to write for the rest of their life we have to realize that that one book that we put out, that's not our last book that we're going to put out. We're working towards the next one, the next, yeah. like it's, it's a lifetime journey. It um, is. And it's a fun journey though. I love writing. That's like, it can be fun. <laughs> like, wow. Well, I, I gotta tell you, I'm on the fourth draft of Trouble Paradise right now. I'm just going through and making sure all my, you know, everything is up to snuff. And um, yeah. I'm just like, I can't do it. <laughs> It's just so yeah. tedious. <laughs> you get sick of looking okay. at it, right? I'm just sick of looking at it. Like, I need a break from it, but yeah. I got to get this out. Like, I, I wanted it, um, because it's um, set on a private island in the Bahamas, um, I wanted it out summertime so that, if you want, it could be a nice little beach read for vacationers nice. and whatnot. Yeah. That's a great idea. It's, it, it is funny, though, because... Um, when it comes to stuff like that, like being just exhausted of looking at your own work, needing a new fresh set of eyes, um, working on just getting it out. But also, uh, I've been, I've been kind of in this mindset of, of like having a writer's block and for what I'm writing 
And it's like, am I am I blocked or am I just unwilling to write what's going on? Yeah. Uh, in reality, do you do you ever struggle with because you've put these books out pretty quickly? Yeah. Do you ever struggle with how the hell am I going to get this next paragraph written or this next word written? Like, I have no clue where I'm going with. Yeah, that. I actually have. Um, it took me four years to write Dark Prison, and mm. I think I, you know, there were parts that were tough to write. Um, and I base a lot of my um, books off of personal experience. Yeah. Um, so you'll see the characters struggling with different aspects of their lives. And, um, you know, that's, that's all a little bit of me in each person. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It was just really tedious. And I think the biggest thing for book one was I was so apprehensive about self-publishing yeah. That I was just like, you know, I can just take my time and I don't know, I'm scared. And <laughs> and then once I did it and realized the process is not that hard, um, you know, it's it's a lot of work. Right. But the, the publishing itself is just a few forms and, <laughs> and then you're yeah. done. At least if you do it through Amazon. I don't know what it's like on other 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 sites and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, now that I know the process, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm ready to go. I got this idea it needs down on paper and I just, that's what I do. And I write for fun. That's, that's my spare time. You know, I don't, that's, that's my hobby. That's the thing that I love to do the most. So has there ever been a time where you're writing, uh, when you were writing Trouble Paradise and you were just like, I don't feel like writing this anymore? Trouble Paradise, not so much, um, just because of um i just really love the romance between jack and cat because jack's kind of a prick yeah <laughs> he's kind of a hard is. to love kind of guy yeah, he's a love kind of guy and cat is she really kind of comes into herself towards the end of the book because she you knows she's got self-esteem issues sure. and she's got high anxiety not towards her it work but towards everything else and there's a reason for that that you find out in the book um so, you know, those two, they play off of each other so well. And, um, you know, they both kind of, Jack softens up towards the end and, and Kat strengthens up, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Have you, did you enjoy writing the romance between them more than you did with Kira and Logan? Actually, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I love the, the uh, tropical setting. And, um, you know, I had, I had the romance part in my head, like, this is what I really want to do. And, um, like I said, that, that first half of the book just, just, just flew through. But, um, you know, I got really excited. I got inspiration, um, from Fallout New Vegas for the super soldier armor. And so I kind of based what it looks like off of that and decided, um, you know, how I wanted to go with that. So that, that kind of, reignited my passion for flame for it yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's important uh are there any are there any kind of like writing exercises that you do uh during the day or throughout the week to kind of get your yourself into a flow of of writing or do you just sit down and go for it i do little bits and pieces here um i'm a mom and i look after my little one so um I just got to do little bits and pieces here and there because she takes up most of my time. Sure. So now I know you, so with the editing stuff, I know that you've put out videos about uh, editing tips mm-hmm. for someone like me, who's grammarly challenged. Um, I hate editing. I think it is wonderful for people who, who like it. <laughs> I just don't like it at all. I love, I love focusing on story and that kind of thing. Okay. For yeah. someone like me, who is terrified of editing, what kind of tips can you give for uh, while writing? Are there are there any tricks or tips you can give while writing to kind of make it an well, easier process? You know, while writing, you just need to get it out on paper. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're if if while you're writing the story, you're too choked up on you know, is this exactly how I want to phrase it, you know, then, then you'll never get through the book. Right. But um, once you're in the editing process, there's a lot of different things that you can do. And a lot of them, um, from reading aloud your whole entire book, you'll know when you're hitting a rough spot when you start stuttering. <laughs> um, yeah. Another thing I've been doing, which is why um, Troubled Paradise is a lot more polished than Dark Prison, 
is I've been letting Microsoft Word read the whole thing to me. And mm-hmm. it's a little bit mechanical and a little bit tinny, but I can immediately tell when there's an issue because yeah. I'm hearing I'm hearing it and not just from myself, but from someone else. Because I'll even when I'm reading out loud, I'll just read right over things, yep. which is why, you know, my another tip is just get another pair of eyes on it. If you have a friend or a family member or someone in the writing community that is willing to look over your book, beta readers are great. Um, if you can hire an editor, I would definitely do that um, just to make sure you don't want to end up getting low reviews because your editing was not great. I know. Definitely. It's such a crap thing. It, it is because the story could be wonderful, but there are people that, out there that are like, there was a comma misplaced. One star. Seriously. <laughs> Some people take it very seriously. They which do. Is fine. To each their own. Yeah. We, nobody, nobody's perfect, right? You know what? If you want to make yourself feel better, look at some of the, the classic authors of our time and previously and look at their reviews yeah. and you'll feel a lot better about yourself going, wait, if this is like like the big time people that are like in literature books and people are tearing these stories apart. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, it's so, it's so true. Just like art is a subjective thing that some people love, some people hate. And the best art is polarizing. I believe it's, it's something that either it unites or uh, tears people apart. They're like, I I don't, I don't like it. I hate you for liking it or whatever. I think that that's a great compliment to have people fight for your work. Yeah. People fight against your work. I think it, it means that it means something to people. Yeah. And remember, a bad review is still a review. And if you're on Amazon, the more reviews you have, the higher up, you know, it goes and, and, and all that stuff. So the algorithm. Yes, it's it's whatever. Have you figured that freaking algorithm out? I mean, no, do you understand I, how it works. I can't like I look at like what my ranking is and it's just like all over the place of day to day, minute to minute. <laughs> I've I've made it as close to like in the top three hundred of my category. Uh, That's amazing! Congrats. Which blows my mind, and I. Uh, but at the same time, it's like I don't know how it gets there. Like I don't know how any I don't know, but I'm trying to piece it together. So like, I I feel like some some things that I've learned are getting your book out there immediately with as many reviews as possible and as many downloads as possible on the first day. Yep. So like getting, are you, are you working on getting like an arc, arc readers for uh, trouble paradise or um, anything like that? So you can, I, have- right now I do have a beta reviewer that um, I'm sure as soon as she's done, we'll, we'll um, write a review. Um, you know, I haven't thought that far ahead, but now that you're saying it, I probably should. It's <laughs> something I'm working on. Like I've, I've heard them called street teams. So yeah. you, get as, you get as many people as possible. You give them advanced copies of your book. You have them promise to read it and review it, and the day it comes out, they they uh, buy a copy yep. on Amazon. And you know whether all of them do it or not, it's still having a it's few still people. Still people out there. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I do have. I've been really promoting the pre-orders, and I've already been getting pre-orders, which is awesome. awesome. Um, I'm yeah. glad people are excited. Um, that that makes me so happy every time I see a new pre-order coming on. Um, well, that's yeah. big too because the day it drops, then you have yeah, those X are all sales. Those are all sales. That's right. It's fantastic. It is. It's such an exciting thing, right? It's like it's like a baby's on the way. It um, is. Well, these are our little children. You know, right. that's why it's like, which is your favorite book? Well, that's like asking me to to pick which child I like the best. I like them all for various reasons. Right. They all have their special, unique qualities. Thank you. So, in closing, JM, mm-hmm. for when this book comes out and the, the Dark Prison series is finished in however many years, where, where do you see yourself on the Mount Rushmore of authors? Oh, my goodness. Are you looking? Are you looking at the mountain? Are I don't you want, walking I, up the mountain? Are I, you I the feel faces? like I'm. Walk, I feel like I'm walking up the mountain. I don't know how high that mountain's gonna get. 
obviously that's that's the future. I can't predict that. Um, I will say, if I look at myself from a year ago, a year ago, I didn't think I would be a published author, let alone have two books. So that right there is is amazing. And, you know, just for everybody watching, just remember, keep chugging along, keep hustling, keep doing what you need to do. Um, every day is progress. And so even if you have a little bit of a step back, you're still moving forward. So whatever hurdles there are, just keep going over them because I guarantee you that that you're in a better place today as an author and a writer than you were, you know, even a couple days ago. You know, you got one more follower, you got one more review, you have, you know, a hundred more words written or whatever. So just keep that in mind when you're having a yucky day. I, I always I always post stuff like that on Twitter because I know people it's a grind sometimes, right? Yeah. And it can get you. It can get you pretty down pretty quick. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll say that watching you and from the the time we first interacted to now, the growth I've seen and the way you go about stuff and the way you, the way you work and like you said, hustle. Has, it's it's been amazing to see. Oh, thank uh, you. And like to see that you you really have become uh, a business to where you're you're doing things and you're taking your talents and your gifts that you have and now you're using them to your advantage, which is a wonderful thing. I feel like that's what we're all supposed to be doing. And yep. I see you starting to do that. And it's such an inspiring thing. I feel like I'm, I'm finally hitting my stride a little bit and I know I have a lot more to go, but um, you know, I've been, I've been so happy these last couple of months. I can't tell you. That's awesome. It is a, it's an awesome, awesome blessing. And uh, it's been great getting mm -hmm. to know you. And thank you so much again for, for taking the time out of your day. To, oh, to thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. I know you've been busy, too. You've been making videos. Been making awesome videos. <laughs> you know, trying to stay busy. Trying yeah. to write. Oh, trying to stay busy. You're like the busiest person I know. <laughs> I'm going to go take an app after this. And I got another interview oh. after. So. Oh, <laughs> busy. Busy. No, but it has. It, it's been. It's been great getting to know you, and uh, I always, always appreciate the time we have to talk and communicate because you have uh, you have a lot of wonderful information to to help people out. And for those who don't know, where can they go and find your editing services and everything about JM? Oh, well, you can always go on my Twitter, which I'm sure you will post below, maybe, because I don't even remember what my username is. I think it's JM Brister. <laughs> it's JM underscore Brister. Brister. I thought there was an underscore in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, so you can check me out there. Um, I also have a website, jmbrister.blogspot.com, that you can take a look at um, my services. So tweet me, drop a DM, and... Email me, Jessica at jessicabrister.com. We'll get it out there. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I'll put links in the description. Thanks Please. again, Jessica. Really appreciate Thank your time. You.